This is Evenings on ABC Radio. I'm Helen Shield, and here is a local who has broken a record this month, not on an athletics track or a stride a penny farthing, but this is a ham radio achievement. Getting a Wi-Fi signal further than anybody else here ever has. Hayden Honeywood is a ham radio DX host. Hello, Hayden. What is this record you've set? Yeah, this is a, a new record for Tassie. Um, we managed to shoot 5.8 gigahertz across Tasmania all the way to Gitsane. Uh 5.8 gigahertz. How does that compare to a household signal? So it's pretty much exactly the same frequency as Wi-Fi. Um, so Wi-Fi is on two frequency bands, 2.4 gigahertz and 5.8 gigahertz. So we're on 5.8. Um, we used slightly more power because we're allowed to. We're, we're licensed to use more power as amateur radio operators. And uh, we hooked it up to a big dish and uh, pointed it in the direction and some good weather conditions helped us out and we managed to get through and make a voice contact to a guy on uh, Mount Tassie in Gippsland. To someone in Mount Tassie? Yes, at Mount Tassie, yes, that's ironic as well. <laughs> Was that a coincidence? Um, no, it's not a coincidence, it's just the closest place and the, probably the best, highest spot for the guy that we spoke to in, uh, in the Gippsland area. And poetic? Yes. Yes, what very more much could so. you want? We were on Mount Wellington as well, I should also add. So mm. um, we uh, we set up one morning very, very early and uh, about 6am and we managed to shoot across to, to there. How long had you been watching the weather for the perfect moment to try that? Uh, probably oh, probably about, the, about three or four days. So we can uh, look at uh, weather forecasts as a, a program called Hepburn, which gives us an idea of how well radio conditions will be on those higher frequencies. And what we did was we had a look to see if it would be a possibility and it looked like it was really good across Bass Strait and across inland Tasmania really early in the morning. So we planned it all and set up early and we were successful. So, yeah, it was what's, pretty good. What's the dish like you set up? Um, so we used a, uh, a dish which is about um, 600 millimetres in diameter. Um, it's a, a, what they call a rocket dish. Um, and we just it's just old equipment that we've we found which was surplus to needs what? We, we hooked up our um, hooked up our radio to it um, which we got we only just actually got them from Bulgaria probably about oh, oh, a month and a half ago and set it up and yeah it, we've managed to to make contact so it was good what did you say to Mount Tassie in Gippsland um, so the other operator at the other end um, we've already spoken to him before and we sort of pre-arranged it with him and he said look if if it looks like it's going to be good let me know which we did and uh he went up there and um yeah we were really really surprised we were only running so your household router back to that analogy only runs very very small amounts of power probably 20 milliwatts or something really really small into a small antenna we were putting out two and a half watts which doesn't really sound that much more um but we we're into quite a, a big antenna with a lot of um, gain in, in that direction. So that's how we were able to make it um, possible. Mm. As uh, there have been wonderful aurora conditions in recent times in Tassie. This is evenings on ABC Radio Hobart and ABC Northern Tasmania, by the way. This is Hayden Honeywood, who is the ham radio DX host who has just been part of breaking this record for getting a Wi-Fi signal from Kunani Mount Wellington to Mount Tassie in Gippsland in Victoria, which is a record. Uh, so weather conditions have to be a certain way for great aurora activity. Do you want exactly the opposite of those kind of weather conditions for what you do? Yes, yeah, so th those are solar weather conditions. Um, so at the moment we're at the top or the peak of the solar cycle, which happens every 11 years. And um, what we've been experiencing has been really good for radio communication, but sometimes a little bit of too much is a bad thing. So our auroras that we had all last year, they um, ended up, we got too much radiation and too much stuff from the sun being spewed out towards Earth. Um, so we saw on HF, so some lower frequencies, they weren't all that good. They, they got blocked basically because of all of the, the, we had the wonderful lights in the sky, but we couldn't operate on HF. So what we did was, um, everyone turns their antennas south towards the aurora we go higher in frequency and we can actually bounce signals off the aurora as well so we had um, a station here in hobart talking to a station in victoria and even further north almost to sydney almost 
And, uh, and yeah, we all point at that common aurora point and we can bounce signals off of it. It's somebody coming in after nine tonight to talk about some of the impacts of that radiation from the aurora activity in recent times. For you, what can you hear when you're operating ham radio when there's an aurora? Um, it sounds very warbly and very sci-fi like. So you listen to it and it's, you know, sounds very much something yeah, like out of a sci-fi movie. Um, but it's, 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 um, you can understand it. It's legible. Um, some people use Morse code still because um, it's a little bit easier to listen to. Others use voice. It all depends on how strong the aurora is and everything. And those ones back in, I think it was May last, uh, May last year were really, really strong. So, um, yeah, it was, uh, it was a piece of cake really to, to be able to do that. And because we're here in Tasmania, it's probably very easy from, from here in Hobart because we're so close to, to the South Pole. Uh, my colleague, Andrew, Andre Leslie, did ask on uh, ABC Northern Tasmania Drive today about getting a Wi-Fi signal from here to Victoria. Were there mirrors involved? <laughs> no mirrors, no. <laughs> no mirrors, Andre. <laughs> Noted. Uh, just a, a lot of power into an antenna in the right weather conditions. Yes, and pointing, we, we still also need to point them in the right direction towards each other. And across inland Tasmania too, I, I did forget to mention that it's quite difficult because it's so mountainous. So what we need to do is we need to rely on this, what we call tropospheric ducting, which is what the weather conditions allow us to talk. Basically, our signal gets into like a duct between a, a cold layer of air, a warm layer of air, a bit like an air conditioning duct, our signal gets trapped goes in one end, appears out the other. So we've got to make sure that's higher than the mountains so that it gets over all the mountain ranges because um, they'll block the signal. So, yeah, we were, I guess, lucky. So. so if you want to get into ham radio, you need to get into mountains. Is that the message? Uh, well, that's one facet of amateur radio. There's so many different facets. Um, it's not just talking to people on the radio. It's experimenting. It's building things. It's tinkering. Um, I mean, you can... You can also operate via satellites that we've got. Um, there's all sorts of, it's just endless. It's a, an amazing hobby. I never feel more aware of the fact that I live on a planet than when there's an aurora. But are you constantly engaged with the fact that we live on a planet as you're bouncing signals around? Yeah, it's um, quite, um, you know, you, your radio is going to reach somewhere around the world at any given time. Um, and then even if it doesn't, We've got some people that do Earth, Moon, Earth, or they bounce signals off the moon and back, which I think I mentioned last time mm. I was here. So, um, yeah, there's always something to do in amateur radio to, to um, pique your interest. Have you done it? Have you you've bounced a signal off the moon? Yes, I've, I've bounced a signal off the moon before on, um, on 140 megahertz to a guy in Italy. So um, that was a bit of a, you know, um, I suppose easy thing to do on, on that frequency, but um, some other guys, you know, they're doing this every single day. So um, mm. with, with, you know, small dishes and lots of power and, yeah, it's uh, it's quite amazing. Do you feel a real gravity of the moment when you're like, okay, I've bounced this signal off the moon. I'm reaching somebody in Italy. What am I going to say? Yeah, it's, I think, I think the process up to that. So because we build a lot of our own equipment and we put our own stations together, for me, it's putting all that together and then actually having it succeed and work, that's sort of like the, the cherry on top. That's the really, you know, the, the fulfilling moment of, oh, I've, I've built this, I've made it work, and I've been able to make this contact with this guy in Italy. And, um, yeah, it's uh, the, he probably had the same, you know, the same feeling as well when he managed to make contact with me in little old Tasmania too. Mm. And your online following keeps growing as well. I think it's jumped tens of thousands of followers on YouTube since last time we spoke. What do they respond to in particular? What are their favourites of what you post? Well, I actually did a video of our record attempt on, on the mountain yeah. as well, and they loved that, um, brought them along for the journey, and, you know, they sort of said, oh, that's awesome, you know, the the setup that we have. Um, and it's all about inspiring people to try this for themselves, to um, have a go, basically, with amateur radio, um, and just to promote it and educate people about it. And, you know, the comments have been really good, and it is continuing to grow, so it's good to see that interest out there. Are people going to come for your record now? Um, I hope so, because then that means it's a challenge for us. So our next um, attempt is we want to try and um, bridge the Tasman. We want to go from um, uh, here in Tassie to the top end of New Zealand. 
We've already done that on a lower frequency, on 2.4 gigahertz, which is, again, a Wi-Fi frequency, but it goes a little bit further. Mm. So, yeah, we're going to try it again, and we just keep trying to push the boundaries and see how far we can get and challenge ourselves. Why can't mine get up my stairs? <laughs> Oh, I can't. Really. I could. I could lend you my big dish if you want to try and see if that helps. I'm not sure if that'll work or not. It's great. I open my phone and it blows me off the bed yeah. upstairs. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to go home and tell my router to have a good hard look at itself after this conversation. Frankly. <laughs> yeah. All right. When are you going to make your next attempt? Um, well, it's usually the best for those frequencies in summer. So we're sort of getting towards the end of summer now. So maybe next year. I think. Um, sort of. Uh, Mid-December um, to um, mid-February is about mm. the ideal time. It's looking pretty warm on Wednesday. It is. I actually haven't had a look to see what it's supposed to look like. But, yeah, um, it's all the things have to align, especially if we want to go across the Tasman too. All right. No, I think there are a few showers around, so that won't help, will it? No, not really. Oh, I look forward to your next adventure. Thank you. Hayden Honeywood is an amateur radio DX host and has a YouTube channel if you'd like to follow uh, so it's Ham Radio DX on YouTube. And the Radio and Electronics Association of Southern Tasmania listens out for people in distress on the oceans as well as other activities. Uh, and if you want to get involved with what they do, REAST, uh, they have monthly talks at the domain. You can find them reast.asn.au.